Pray, Father, I decrease that the Holy Spirit might increase. Speak through my vocal cords, speak through my mind, all of you and none of me. I declare your word will flow freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic spirit. Father, your word is anointed, it shall not return to your void, but it shall accomplish everything that you send it out to do. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. It is in Jesus' name I pray. And all God's people say amen. amen and amen. I just may be seated. Thank you for your service this morning. Amen. amen. People can brag and boast that they will do this or they won't do this. They will do that or they won't do that because people think sometimes they're all that in a bowl of chips. Mm -hmm. When people have done some things in the world, they begin to think more highly of themselves than they ought to think. And that's the case in our text this morning. We have a man here who at one point in his ministry and his time with Jesus began to think that he was invincible, began to think that he was beyond temptation began to think that he could accomplish anything that he set his mind to do without any failures in his life. We encounter a man who was impulsive, who was sometimes braggadocious, who was sometimes uh, arrogant, but who knew without a shadow of doubt that he would never, ever betray the Lord Jesus Christ. This man, you know him is Peter, Simon Peter, son of Jonas. And that's what our text, or the person our text is talking about in John chapter 21. It's talking about a man who has for three years walked with Jesus. We're talking about a man who was not afraid to get all up in Jesus' Kool-Aid when Jesus said that he was going to be crucified. This man was so bold that he said, Jesus, that will never happen to you. And Jesus had to rebuke him in front of everybody because Jesus didn't want anybody to think that they were in control of his destiny. Because if someone else is in control of your destiny, then you will never do what it is in your heart to do. So you have to be willing to control your own destiny, and you might speak words to people, but never let people direct you. You be directed by God and by God's spirit. And so you remember this, this Peter, this, this friend of ours, uh, who at the time that Jesus was arrested, uh, was standing around watching them bring Jesus before uh, the high priest, watching all of the lies that were being told on Jesus. And then he got found out. Somebody recognized him as one of uh, Jesus' followers. And the little girl said, I know you. You're from Galilee. You've been walking with this man. You, you know this man. And Peter says, I don't know him. And then a few minutes later, she said, yeah, you the one man. I know you. I recognize you. I know that was you hanging out with Jesus. And Peter said, no, you got the wrong one. And so a few minutes later, she came back. This time she brought some folks with her. She said, I know this man walked with Jesus. And, and Peter cussed. <laughs> Peter cussed, you know. And, and when he cussed, he said, I don't know this Jesus. We sweetened it up for you so you can handle it. But the Bible says he cussed. And he got upset because Jesus had already told him, now, Peter, you're going to deny me three times. And G uh, Peter said, no, Jesus, even if I have to give my life, I got you. I'm your boy. I'm with you through thick and thin. I'm, I'm your ride or die buddy. I'll never uh, deny you. I'll never betray you. I'm going to be with you to the very end. We know what happened. He went somewhere and cried when he realized because he met Jesus eye to eye and he was so ashamed. He went off and cried. I wonder this morning if there's anybody here who has ever let somebody down that you oh, wow. promised 
You right. never let them down. Right. They tell me that if you've been married over 30, 40 years, you got some mud in the marriage, mm -hmm. that you've had some disappointments that you lived through because you felt your marriage was more important than what was done to you. And you felt that the person you were with really loved you and didn't really want to do what they did, but they were human and they did it anyway, and you forgave them. You may have a friend, you know, that you grew up with, and all of a sudden now your friend starts acting funny. And it's your friend that's spreading dirt on you because your friend know everything about you, but now that very friend that said they will be your BFF, they will be your ride or die, is that friend who has become jealous of your success Jealous of your opportunities, and now is telling folks she thinks she all that, but she ain't. I know some stuff about her. And now all of a sudden, that person is doing things that they said they would never do. Uh, we've got some people in this church and in this community who right now are saddened by the fact that they betrayed a friend. They betrayed a trust, and you know that they're going to see that person again. And you remember Peter ran, he, he, he hid, he was crying, he was so hurt that he hurt Jesus. But then when Jesus rose from the dead, he told Mary, go tell my disciples and Peter. He had to point Peter out because Peter no longer felt that Jesus wanted to be with him because he had denied him. And that's how people feel when you know somebody has said something about you, and they are in your presence, and they're doing everything they can not to look at you, and not to have any interaction with you, you have to sometimes reach out to them and say, it's going to be all right. I, I know what you did, but, but it's going to be all right now. It's going to be all right. I heard what you said. I heard about what you said, but now we need to get our act together because we're all human. And we have to ask ourselves, is this worth ending the relationship or should I forgive and move on? We have to ask ourselves, is it worth the trouble to have animosity and angst against, against someone who really has no power over your success or no power over your destiny because your destiny is in the Lord's hand? You know, sometimes I think we're so holy that we know earthly good. Come on, come on. Sometimes I think we're so spiritual that people don't want to deal with us yeah. because we walk around in a highfalutin, snobbish nose type of attitude. And we look down on people instead of looking across at people. We think because of who we are and what we have accomplished, we are better than someone else. Peter was like that. Peter thought that he was better than any of the other disciples. Peter was the only one who said, I'll never, ever deny you, Jesus. Now, we know all the other disciples did the same thing. But Peter felt he was the head honcho because Peter was the one who received the revelation. Peter was the one who shouted, Thou art the Christ the son of the living God. Yes, Peter yes. was the one who had been used by the Holy Spirit. Peter was the one, you know, who just, he was going to lead the disciples into the building of the new church. But Peter, when Jesus was crucified, had some unfinished business with Jesus. You know, we can do a lot of stuff if we take care of unfinished business. Yeah. It's hard to move forward yeah. when you have not taken care of of unfinished business and you cannot afford to leave business unfinished because that unfinished business can come back one day on you when you least expect it. And so we ought not be people who brag. I think that humility yeah. is the key to the anointing of God. That, that Paul says we know in part, we prophesy in part, but when that which is fully comes, then we're going to know what we need to know. Yes, and the word yes. Paul says all of us got a little bit of truth, but none of us have all the truth. But there are some Christians who believe they got it all, who believe they're smarter than any other Christian, their interpretation of the word of God is better than anybody else, the way they worship is better than anybody else, and everybody ought to get with their program, or they're not Christian. They are so arrogant in their 
religiosity until they turn people off instead of turning people on about Jesus. Yes. And Jesus does not want folks to be so bold and so arrogant that they think they know everything and that they even know what they're going to do tomorrow. So they make all these bold predictions. James said in James chapter 4, if you got your Bible, then I'm going to go back to John. But James said in James uh, chapter 4 about being a boaster, a person who always boasting. In verse 13, he says, now listen, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. He says, why, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. Mm. Why, why, what is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. So James says, listen, all you have is today. And you ought to today do all the good you can while you can because tomorrow is not promised to you. And you're boasting about what you're going to do in the future when you're leaving things undone today. My mama used to say, don't pull off for tomorrow what you can do today. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the most important right. day of your say life. It. Today it. is when you ought to rejoice. Today is when you ought to give God glory. Today is when you ought to be thankful. Today is when yes. you ought to do yes. everything yes. you can for the kingdom. And then when it comes to tomorrow, say, well, if it's the Lord's will, I'll do <laughs> this right. or that. Right. But I don't know how I'm going to feel in the morning. I don't know how I'm going to feel in the future. It all depends on what God has planned for my life. Yes, I have goals. I've got a 20-year plan. But it depends on what God wills for me to do, whether I will ever execute one day of that plan. Because God is such a God that he can change you and your plans in an instant. God is such a God that God can redirect your step and all the plans of men are futile without God's yes and amen. That's right. That's why the Bible tells us to roll our plans before the Lord. Commit your way to the Lord. The Bible says a man plans his way, but the Lord orders his steps. <laughs> so we ought not become so entrenched and what it is we say we're going to do. But we ought to say, Lord, whatever is your will for me to do, yes, that's yes, what I want to yes, do. I yes. made some plans, and I want to make my plan stand. But if you change my direction, I'll walk in the direction that all you right, set for right. my life. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. The world rewards people who plan and stick to their plan apart from ever checking in with God. Uh-huh. You are a success when you accomplish your goals. But how are you going to feel when you get to heaven? And God said, didn't you hear me tell you I wanted you to do this? And instead of changing your plan to fit my plan, you went on and did what it was you wanted to do. Because you're young, you're gifted, you, you're capable, you're deserving, you're worthy, you trust yourself, you got all that going for you. But God said, didn't I wake you up in the midnight hour and tell you I wanted you to do something else, but you would not turn from your goal to reach my goal? We can never have a conversation about what we're going to do without talking to God. We can never determine on our own where we're going to be tomorrow without acknowledging God in all of our ways so that he can direct our step. There are pitfalls along the Jericho Road. And the Jericho Road is the road of life. Yes, it is. So yes, here's it is. Peter bragging about what he's going to do and what he's not going to do, only to discover he failed. I will admit to you there are some times when I have 
have not kept my word yeah. that worried me and bothered yeah. me because my daddy said yeah. the word is your bond. Yeah. Yeah. There are some times when I said yeah. what I wouldn't do and mama used to say never yeah. say never. Yeah. yeah, me too. And I think she got it from this passage in James. Mm -hmm. You need to include God in your conversation. You need to make sure that everybody knows if it be the Lord's will, I'm going to do this. If it be the Lord's will, this is going to happen. I've got it written down, but it has to be in sync and in line with the will of God. And then here we find Peter, John chapter 21. And watch what happens to Peter. Peter is out fishing. And the Bible says in verse 1 of John 21, afterward Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way, Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, now the sons of Zebedee are James and John, and two other disciples were together. And I said James and John because it goes on to talk about the, the disciple whom Jesus loved in verse 7. His name was John. He's the one that Jesus said, uh, behold your mother. He's the one that Jesus entrusted with the welfare of his mother. And that's why all the other disciples said Jesus loved him so much. So you have to be able to connect that in the text. He says, I'm going out to fish, Simon, Peter told them. And they said, well, go, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Now, do you remember in Luke chapter 5 that when Peter, James, and John were fishing on the lake, the Sea of Galilee, here comes Jesus and asked, can I use your boat? They fished all night and caught nothing, but they allowed Jesus to use the boat, and Jesus preached from that boat. And after Jesus had finished preaching, he said to them, Go on back out there and fish again. <laughs> all right. They said, Lord, look, we've been toiling all night and caught nothing. We're tired now. And you're not a fisherman. We're fishermen. <laughs> There's nothing in that water to catch. And Jesus said, no, cast your, net on your nets on the other side. And when they did that, they caught a large drought. Uh -huh. Well, this is Jesus saying, Peter, you need to go back to when you first believed me. When you didn't know me and you didn't think you could direct me and tell me what you wanted. All right. But you would listen to me so I could tell you what I wanted. He said, go back to that time when you first met me. And every now and then, in order for us to be anointed, 